So what we have right here is a brand new smartwatch from a company who hasn't made any smartwatches in the past, which is exciting because Citizen traditionally makes analog watches, which means they're bringing the analog aesthetic over to this smartwatch. And as you can see right here, I think this watch looks really nice. It's a really big, durable design, stainless steel, very solid aesthetic, and there are three different designs as well. So the first one right here, as you can see, has the red on the top right corner. There's also a blue version and a black one as well. Uh, and so it's a pretty nice looking watch, but there is really one thing I wanna talk about later on the video, just there's, there's, there's one thing we're gonna get to, but let's start off with a physical tour of this device because like I said, the physical aspect, there are a lot of really great things with the Citizen CZ Smart. So the first thing, like I said, is going to be the overall physical design. We have a 46 millimeter body, so it's a little bit on the larger side. It's going to look better probably on a men's wrist, honestly. If you have a smaller, thinner wrist, this is going to look a little bit large for a watch. But something I like is, Unlike a lot of other large watches out there, this one really has a very nice ratio. So it's not too thick. Uh, it looks really natural. I mean, honestly, it's going to be the same body pretty much as a lot of other analog watches, which I think is one of the better aspects of, I mean, there's really, there's two types of smartwatches. There's the smartwatches that are made by the big tech giants. So I'm talking like the Apple, Samsung, Xiaomi. And a lot of times when those come into, like they have great software, they have great features, but they don't always look the best. Then on the flip side, we have something like this, which is coming from an analog watchmaker. They bring it in and they're going to have a really nice aesthetic. Now, with that being said though, let's talk more about what this watch actually has. Continue on with this physical tour. So the screen right here is 1.28 inches. It's an AMOLED screen, it's a touch screen, and you do have an always on display. So as far as screens go, I was definitely impressed. It does a great job. You can see it in daylight. Uh, you can see it when it's dark out, like everything about the screen is, is just great. It's exactly what I was looking for. On the right side, we have three buttons. The top button and the bottom button are both customizable. So I'll talk about the interface later on in this video, but just keep in mind that you can customize those buttons to really do whatever you want. Then the middle button is actually not only a button, but also a rotating crown. So the middle button is our home button, our back button, our menu button, and then you can rotate it to navigate throughout the interface. It's something that I'd really like to see on a lot of watches like this, so I was very happy with the controls. Now if we look between the top button and the middle button, you'll notice that there is a tiny hole right there. That hole, along with the hole on the top, uh, one of those is the microphone. I believe the second one is barometer, but don't quote me on that, it might be a second microphone. And then on the left side, we have our speaker. So having microphone speaker combo means that you can use the voice assistant. You can also answer phone calls with this. Uh, and you really have a lot of other options, including like voice typing and, and a lot of other things like that. Now, if we flip the watch over, you'll see the straps are really easy to remove. They're 22 millimeter straps. And by default, it comes with these really nice thick silicone straps. Although I kind of wish they were leather for this price. I mean, I'll talk about the price in a second, but I mean, you know, they definitely get the job done. On the back, you'll also see that we have those two metal rings. Those are for the charger. The charger does just kind of magnetically snap on here uh, and it charges up pretty quickly. The battery life uh, lasts about like one to four days, depending on what setting you use. And, and again, I'll talk about that later on in the video. But then of course, in the very middle there, we have our heart rate sensor. It's a two diode heart rate sensor. And you know, as soon as I picked up this watch and looked at the back, I realized what was going on here. So this might look familiar to you guys. If you've seen any of my previous videos about smartwatches, you might be familiar with the Skagen Foster 3 and the Fossil Gen 5. So we know that the Skagen Foster 3 was the Fossil Gen 5, just with a different body. And then here we are now, this one, is, you know, I'm just gonna go out and say it, this Citizen CZ Smart is the Fossil Gen 5, just a year and a half later with really no significant updates. On the inside, we still have eight gigabytes of storage, which is not a big deal. But unfortunately, really the, the one big thing, well, there's two big things. The one, the first big thing is that it has exactly the same chip as the Fossil Gen 5. So not only is it a year and a half later and we don't see any kind of updates to the internals with this device, but other devices actually do have updates. So we have the, we have the TicWatch Pro 3, which has the newest Snapdragon 4100. And so this older chip not only limits your use on the watch, like it's gonna be a little bit slower, you really won't notice that much of a difference, but really the big thing is going to be the same problem that a lot of Wear OS watches face, and that's the battery life. This battery life on this watch is only going to be about one day, realistically. Now, fortunately, the reason we liked the Fossil Gen 5 was that we had those battery controls in the top. Again, I'll get into the interface in a second, but 
those can't save this watch. You might stretch it out to two days. If you're lucky and you really don't use much, maybe you can get a third day out of this. But for the most part, you're really not going to be getting more than about one day out of this watch. So with that being said, guys, this really is the same watch as that one. I'll get into the second kicker in a second. Like there's a second like big thing about this watch that, that really, well, we're gonna get to that in a second, but let's first get into an interface tour because even though this watch doesn't have any significant updates to the hardware, uh, it actually does have some software updates for the newest Wear OS, which is a very welcomed upgrade. Wear OS has been very antiquated for a while, and so finally making some changes. Uh, we're gonna talk about that in just a second. Okay, so now let's get into a microphone and a speaker test because like I said, you can use this for answering phone calls or doing uh, voice assistant stuff, a lot of things like that. All right, so I'm just calling myself right now, and this is what the watch speaker sounds like. Comment down below, and let me know what you think of this, if you can hear what I'm saying or not. Again, it's just a standard phone call. I'm using a different phone to call myself, and the speaker is at full volume. All right, now this is just the opposite. I'm talking to my watch right now, so this is a test of the microphone on the Citizen CZ Smart. So comment down below. Let me know if you can hear what I'm saying and how clear it is. Uh, and again, you're going to be using this microphone or anything with a voice assistant, phone calls, or voice typing as well. All right, so just a quick tour of the interface here. Uh, like I said, the top button, we can press it, it'll go into my music player, I customized that. Uh, the middle button is our back button and our home button. And from the home screen, you can actually just go into your app drawer, which has all the different apps. If you turn the crown, we're going up and down, you can see you know tons and tons of different apps and you can get more in the Play Store as well. And then the bottom button I customized to uh, open up Google Pay. So you have NFC Pay on here, of course, and otherwise, the interface from here, you can do a lot with the touch screen. So swiping down from the top, you get your quick settings. If you tap on the gear, you get into all of your settings. Swiping up from the bottom, you'll go through all of your different uh, notifications. And then of course, pressing the button to go back. If we go to the left, you'll see that we have a, kind of a Google My Day thing. So on the top, you have your voice assistant. It tells you the date and the, the weather as you go down. Some quick access things. And of course, if you have any like shipments coming, stuff like that, just a basic Google My Day thing. And then on the right side, we have our tiles. So as we go through, these are a little bit newer. These are updated since uh, the new Wear OS came out. So we can see like our sleep tracking here. Obviously, like I said, so once we tap on it, we can go into that. But obviously, like I said, it's not exactly the most in-depth sleep tracking. So it's really really just uh, the you know restful light awake is all they're doing so I believe it's based on your motion they don't have an spo2 sensor so they can't do everything with that but as we go through we have a lot of other uh, little tiles is what they call them and of course you can touch and hold I guess I haven't actually finished the tutorial yet I, I never go all the way that over there in my tiles but you can add other things in your tiles as well and then the last thing is to change your watch face you just tap and hold and we have a couple right here but you can change more uh, you can change more actually if you are in the app on your phone all right, so now let's get into some quick pros and cons. What I liked and didn't like about this watch, uh, the first thing I liked is that it does run the newest Wear OS. I really like the new interface there, the sleep tracking, uh, the weather watch faces. Like, There's a lot of cool things that I really like about this one. On top of that, you have some great standard features. You're gonna have Google Assistant on here. You're gonna find my phone. You're gonna have great controls for music, weather, NFC pay, like all the standard stuff that we really like about Wear OS watches, which I know they get a lot of heat, but they definitely do a lot of things relatively well. And so this watch does all of that. It also has that nice rotating crown on the side. Like the overall physical design, Citizen did a great job on the outside. I really wish the only thing that was different would be the battery life on the inside and a couple other internal things that we'll talk about more about in the cons. And I guess that leads us into the cons with this. Like I said, the first one is that you're gonna have that older chip on there. That's a huge drawback because it really kills your battery life. Unlike a lot of other watches that are easily getting four to seven days, this one lasting one day means you have to take it off every single day to charge it. And at that point, why did you even put sleep tracking on there? And we didn't even get to the second big drawback in this video. Uh, the second one, I mean, I hate to say it guys, but this watch right here, they're charging $400 at the time of release. I'll link it down below if you guys wanna see the latest price, maybe they'll drop the price, but this basically is the Fossil Gen 5, but double the price. And yes, I would say it, it, it does probably look a little bit nicer uh, and it's made by Citizen. So yeah, it, it is nice on the outside, but at the same time, you're getting exactly the same experience, the same exact watch, uh, but instead of $200, this one is $400. So I'm not sure why they came up with that price for this exact model here. But regardless, that is absolutely a drawback. If somebody asked me, hey Mike, I wanna buy this watch, should I buy this or the Gen 5? I would say buy the Fossil Gen 5 every single time. Just save your money, it's gonna be really the same exact watch. 
Now, with that being said, there are some other drawbacks that applied to the Fossil Gen 5, and just to highlight some of those here, uh, the first one, like I said, the short battery life, the lack of auto workout detection. It's something that we're seeing on a lot of other watches these days. If I just start running or walking, it'll automatically detect that. This watch doesn't do that. On top of that, you don't have any of the modern health features that we're seeing on even little fitness bands, but specifically on the more premium, especially at this price point, uh, the more premium watches. So this does not have SpO2 sensor, which means less accurate sleep tracking. It does not have an ECG. I don't really use ECG anyway, but regardless, it's not there. It doesn't have blood pressure. It doesn't have skin temperature. It doesn't have a lot of those more advanced health focused features that some people might be looking for on a smartwatch. This also doesn't have Qi wireless charging, which I say this on every watch that doesn't have it. You really need to have that in 2021 because I just wanna be able to charge my watch on the back of my phone, especially if the battery life is this short. I hate to have to travel and bring an extra charger everywhere I go. And then the last one is, even though this watch looks really nice for $400, I, I, I'm not sure why they included a silicone strap. I assume it's so it's more like sweat or water resistant, but realistically, uh, with a watch that looks like this and doesn't have as many health focused features, I'm not sure why they would include silicone straps. I wish that they would include like leather or metal straps, uh, or at the very least, just include two straps in the box for $400. It seems pretty easy to just throw in an extra pair of straps in there. But regardless, that's my review of the Citizen CZ Smart Watch. If this, if this came out two years ago, I would have loved it. I would have said it's the best watch and everybody should buy it. But realistically speaking, uh, it's hard to recommend right now. It, it looks great. And if you like the, the appearance of that, then yeah, you should definitely buy it. But if you haven't already purchased it, I would highly recommend considering a different watch. The Fossil Gen 5, like I said, is going to give you exactly the same experience, uh, but at half the price. And if you're willing to spend this price, you might as well start looking at something like the, the Samsung Galaxy Watch 3, or even better probably, is the TicWatch Pro 3. Now, TicWatch Pro 3, like I said, offers the, the Wear OS experience here, but just better. So guys, that's been it. Comment down below. Let me know what you think of the, of the Citizen CZ smartwatch. Is it too little, too late? Is it, are they on the right path? Would you buy it or not? I wanna hear from you guys in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, as always, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.